All right, so we're going to give a quick demonstration of the IQ8 inverter system. So right now, we have a system that consists of 10 of our IQ8 PV inverters running off-grid. Uh, and these IQ8 PV inverters are connected to a simulated PV array. So this system has no batteries right now. It's running off-grid off of PV alone. Because we have a PV simulator, we can actually simulate how the system responds at different times of day. Right now, we actually have it configured to output 1,000 watts per meter squared, which is basically the middle of the day, full sun. You have quite a bit of power on this system. And we're going to see how it responds to different types of loads. We have a vacuum cleaner here. This vacuum cleaner actually has the unique distinction of being the first load we purchased for this program um, to experiment with. And actually, one of the reasons we picked it is because vacuum cleaners like this, especially old vacuum cleaners like this Hoover, pull a lot more power when you first turn them on than they do in steady state. We call this inrush current. And inrush current is actually something that's especially challenging for inverters, especially solar connected inverters, to, to tolerate uh, running off grid. What you'll see in this demonstration is a, uh, how our brownout control works. Because we'll be able to start up the vacuum cleaner no problem, but as I load the system with space heaters, you'll see it start to struggle. And that's our brownout control kicking in. It's basically saying there's a little bit too much load, then I have sunlight hitting me. I'm going to reduce the system voltage to make sure that I can keep this, the system still powered. So with that demonstration, you saw that you know, it was able to turn on the vacuum cleaner, handle the inrush, even though this is a pretty small PV system, and it was able to handle additional loads turning on after the vacuum cleaner started up. But as we increased load, the system started to struggle. Um, what we'll do now is show what happens as it gets later in the day and you have less power available. Because brownout control, it's a very capable technology, um, but there's going to be a limitation to it. At a certain point in day, there's going to be just not enough sun hitting your panels to power the loads that you have. So we're going to simulate that now by dropping the irradiance level to 300 watts per meter squared, which is sort of like uh, mid-afternoon time, the sun's setting. You don't quite have enough power available. You still have enough power to run lighting and probably one space heater, but not enough to handle the inrush on this vacuum cleaner. So we saw here is what happens when you simply try to draw too much power from the PV. The voltage collapses too much, and the system decides to shut off. You can see that the system is designed to automatically restart. Um, so as soon as you remove the load that caused the blackout, the system recovers instantaneously. All right, so we're going to do one more demonstration of brownout control, this time a dynamic demonstration, where we're going to show what happens when you have a good sunlight, but then some clouds come over and basically temporarily reduces the amount of sunlight that you have and thus power feeding your system, and then that cloud cover goes away. So we're going to show the dynamic performance of intelligent brownout control and showing how it can respond very quickly to changing conditions. So to demonstrate this, we're going to uh, turn on the vacuum cleaner again, the load that we know has very high inrush. We're going to let it spin up to full rates, like we're actually doing some vacuuming. And then we're going to simulate some cloud cover coming over, which is going to cause the vacuum cleaner to struggle a little bit, the light to dim. And then we'll show that cloud cover basically um, going away, and the system go comes back up to full power. So there you can see the active brownout working dynamically, causing the vacuum cleaner to operate at a lower speed and the light to dim because it's running at lower voltage, but then instantly recovering once that cloud cover goes away. So this demonstration was done without any batteries at all. This was done with just a 10 panel solar system only. But that's not to say that brownout control is not useful with systems with batteries. Um, brownout control could also be very useful on a system that had a very small amount of batteries where you're running a large amount of load. Or even if you had a lot of batteries and you're just kind of pushing the limits of what your system can actually do, brownout control is universal. It's just a system that allows you to operate near the bounds of what your system is actually capable of doing with a larger amount of forgiveness. It gives you a little bit of forgiveness where the voltage can drop a little bit when you're pushing the envelope, uh, and the system will degrade rather than completely shutting off. So it's very useful um, just for making sure that the energy that we're using is practical.